All right, hello friends. Let us get into the joints associated with the hip region. And typically when we're talking about the hip region, mainly we're talking about the hip joint, uh, which is going to be between the acetabulum and the head of the femur. So one of those nice, uh, very obvious ball and socket joints. But before we move into those and the specific, uh, specifics of the ligaments there, there are two other joints that we want you to know, really three, because the sacroiliac joints are paired, that we want you to know that are in this region. So as I mentioned, one, you have two different sacroiliac joints. You're going to have one on the right side and one on the left side. These are fairly easy to identify because these are going to be the joints between the sacrum, as we know right here is your sacrum, and your coxal bones, specifically the ileal portions of your coxal bones. So where they actually articulate are called the auricular surfaces uh, because they look like little ears. The sacroiliac joint is a very, very strong joint, which makes sense. There's a lot of weight that's being carried around this region. It's actually an example of a compound joint. So the majority of the joint is going to be a synovial joint. But well back in the posterior regions of the sacroiliacs, uh, that's actually going to be a fibrous joint. So that's one of the reasons why this joint is so strong. There's a little bit of movement that's allowed, but necessarily there's not a lot of movement. Because remember, with increased stability, uh, you're going to have uh, not as much mobility. So it makes sense that this isn't a very mobile joint. Now, if you're looking anteriorly, remember these are those obturator foramina. This region right here, these are going to be your pubic bones or the pubis portion of the coxal bones. And where these two bones on either side are going to unite at their symphyseal surfaces, this is going to be the pubic symphysis. And remember, when we were talking about cartilaginous joints, a symphysis is a type of cartilaginous joint. These are going to be found mainly in the midline. The intervertebral discs are an example of a symphysis as well. So these are not, this is not a synovial joint, but a fibrous joint. All right, moving into the true hip joint, which is that ball and socket joint. We are going, this is the second most mobile joint in the body, second to your shoulder, both are ball and socket, but the actual ligaments and the muscles that are going to surround and connect the hip joint region really allows for um, a, a more secure fit between the head of the femur and the acetabulum of the coxal bone. So while, you're cap while the hip joint is capable of flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, medial and lateral rotation, as well as circumduction, it's not the same range of motion as what you have in the shoulder joint. And you can just kind of do that on yourself and that's fairly obvious. So let's talk some about the ligaments that are going to be associated with this region. And first, I want you to look at this image and I want you to try to tell if you're looking at an anterior or a posterior view. So take a moment, look at the structures. I would look at part of the vertebral column here. This posterior portion over here, I think it's pretty telling. And so after you've thought about it, let's talk about how we know that this is going to be a posterior view. And if you looked over here in terms of the ligaments that you can see, then this probably, hopefully, was going to give an indication we're looking at a posterior view. For me, when I'm trying to get my bearings in terms of where I am located, right here is going to be the ischial tuberosity. This nice, robust area, those are those sit bones. They are always posterior. So I found the ischial tuberosity that helped in terms of being organized. You can see a little bit of some of the spinous processes associated with the vertebral column. It's not quite as obvious here. Um, and you can kind of see how that iliac crest is continuing to this posterior portion of the iliac crest. Also, you can see a little bit of the lesser trochanter. So all things that are helping me identify that we're looking at a posterior view, but for me, usually it's this ischial tuberosity that helps the most. So in terms of the ligaments that you can see from this posterior view, really when we're talking about the hip joint, there are um, three main ligaments or three large ligaments that we're going to talk about. 
uh, and then two smaller ones. The three larger ones, the ilio, the ischio, and the pubofemoral ligaments, are all going to be capsular, meaning that they're thickenings of that articular capsule. And so the dominant one when you're looking at a posterior view is going to be the ischiofemoral ligament. And the great thing about these ligaments is that they tell you exactly where they're attaching. So from the ischium to the femur, this is the ischiofemoral. And while it looks fairly expansive, and it, it is, it's a fairly large ligament, it's not a particularly strong ligament in comparison to the other two. It has a small role in limiting medial rotation and preventing hyperextension, um, but it's the weakest of the three. You can see a little bit of the iliofemoral ligament, which is shaded here in this kind of teal color. The iliofemoral ligament is the biggest, uh, sometimes it's referred to as the strongest ligament in the body. Uh, that's obviously going to change with different textbooks. Um, and let's look at that in a little bit clearer view. So now we're looking at an anterior view. I know I'm looking at an anterior view for a few re reasons here. For me, first and foremost, you can see this pubic symphysis from an anterior view, and you can see the sacrum over here, and then we're getting into the coxal bone over here. So we're looking at an anterior view. This larger ligament right here is going to be the iliofemoral, so from the anterior superior iliac sp spine all the way down to the intertrochanteric line, so kind of between your greater trochanter and your lesser trochanter. So this is the most expansive, this is the strongest, sometimes you hear it referred to as Y-shaped. So this is your iliofemoral. This plays a major role in terms of preventing hyperextension. You do not want your hip joint to hyperextend, uh, particularly during locomotion, but even in terms of standing. So it helps to kind of screw that femoral head into the acetabulum. Now if you're looking a bit more medially, then this uh, ligament that's going to be shaded in purple, this is your pubofemoral ligament. You can see that it's kind of hard to tell where the transition is from the iliofemoral to the pubofemoral, and that's because the fibers really do kind of intermix together. So it, if we were to have a label and we wanted you to have pubofemoral, we would have to put it way over here where it's quite obvious that it's attaching to the, uh, the pubis or the pubic portion of the bones. And same thing for the iliofemoral. We would make sure that it's far enough away from uh, the pubic bone region to be the iliofemoral. As I, su as I suggested, the pubofemoral is going to suggest the, the pubic bone to the femur. It's going to interweave with the iliofemoral ligament. And this is going to play a role in terms of preventing over-abduction or abduction of the hip joint. Okay. So those were those capsular ligaments. Now let's talk about two smaller ligaments that you would not be able to see unless you actually opened up the articular capsule. So we're actually looking in, and so much so that you actually have to disarticulate and move that femoral head away from, basically dislocate this region in order to see these ligaments. And so the first one we're going to talk about is the transverse acetabular ligament. So as its name would suggest, it's going to be very closely associated with the acetabulum. And this is the acetabulum right here. And this is the head of the femur right here. So we had to move the head of the femur out of the way. We're looking into the acetabulum. Now, like with most ball and socket joints, you are going to have a labrum associated with the acetabulum. And the transverse acetabular ligament is basically just going to fill in that, um, there's a little, what's referred to as the acetabular notch, which is the in, uh, missing inferior segment. And that ligament is just a continuation, basically, of that labrum. So that's going to be the transverse acetabular ligament. So it's allowing for a better fit of that femoral head um, into the acetabular region. The other ligament I want you to note is what's referred to as the ligament of the head of the femur, and that's going to be right here. And it would attach um, into this acetabular region right in here. So right in here, there's going to be a little region where it's um, not going to have some of that articular cartilage, and that allows for this to kind of fit into this region. So acetabular notch to the fovea of the head of the femur. 
This particular ligament doesn't play an uh, important role in terms of strengthening or stability of the hip, but it is important because it is going to be a conduction site for the artery of the head of the femur. And that is going to uh, supply this region um, in terms of the head. So if you have some type of dislocation that allows for this ligament to be disrupted, which could disrupt the artery, that has tremendous implications in terms of the supply of the head of the femur. Okay, so those are the main ligaments that we want you to know. Be aware that there are going to be not only the hip joints in this region, but the sacroiliac joints and the pubic symphysis. And please do always feel free to reach out to myself and my anatomy colleagues with any questions associated with the hip joint and the sacroiliac or your SI joints and the pubic symphysis. Thanks and have an excellent day.